and hello and welcome to GTV UK News. This is Mike from the UK. Today is February the 24th, 2021. Uh, for the last uh, one week, we have seen tremendous going on in terms of the CCP virus and many other related issues that we are concerned about taking down the CCP. Here we are very happy to have Mr. Stephen K. Bannon in our show to answer some of our concerned questions. Hello, Mr. Bannon. Hi, Mike. Thank you very much for having me on uh, on the show. Okay, so um, Daniel, please, your first question. Uh, hi, Mr. Bannon, Daniel. Hello, good morning. Good morning, thank you. A um, question is, the, Can uh, the Canadian Parliament has determined the CCP's treatment of Uyghurs as genocide. Do you have any comments regarding this determination? Thanks. What I'm shocked about is that um, the whole entire world, the entire world has not come to that conclusion. You know, the, the, the State Department under, uh, under uh, Mike Pompeo uh, came to that conclusion very early on and had, you know, we put out a, 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 a declaration right before, right before, um, right before uh, Pompeo left office that said that the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, was a genocidal regime. I'm glad Canada is following up on it. I would like Trudeau to be more aggressive. The parliament is, and you see this around the, the world, you're seeing parliaments, you're seeing individual voices of parliamentarians stand up, uh, but you're not seeing, you're not seeing overall, you're not seeing, uh, you're not seeing enough action taken at the executive level. Okay, uh, th thank you, Daniel. Uh, All right, so let's cut that down. Okay, uh, the director, please go to the, uh, oh, we have some issues, emergencies here, and we are going to wait for Mr. Bannon to come back. Uh, director, please go to the cutscene. Uh, please go to our intro. Okay, so uh, Mr. Bannon are, is going to have some sort of uh, emergency situation. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. We just had okay. a- Okay, Mr. Bannon's- sound. I'm good. Um, Mr. Bannon is back, very happy. And any more regarding the parliament? No, no, no. Look, here's here's the problem: is that it's clearly a genocidal regime. It's a genocidal regime, specifically on the Uyghurs. But the issue is much broader than that. The issue is the CCP's what they do to the Chinese people overall, what they're doing to La Beijing, what they do to the uh, Tibetan Buddhists and uh, and the Dalai Lama, what they're doing to the underground evangelical Christians and in, in the Catholic Church. It's broader. And let's be honest and let's be brutally frank. The governments of the West are essentially cowards when it comes to confronting the Chinese Communist Party. They're cowards. I mean, the Biden administration has been, I think, it, 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 they've tried to at least have some semblance of toughness and that's purely because of what the Trump administration did. And the American people support a confrontational attitude towards the Chinese Communist Party, not, not this thing of competition. Right, not this thing of oh, oh we want to compete more. But obviously, we want to compete, and I think what you're seeing in Canada and throughout the rest of the world, where's the United Nations on this? Where's the United Nations Security Council on this? Where's the European Union? Where's the European Commission? Where's NATO? You know, where are all these bodies that the American people put so much money into and so much uh, support of? Right? Where are allies? And quite frankly, where's the decency and humanity of the of the world's parliaments? in the world's governments and even people that are prominent that are out of government there's just not let's let's, let's if we want to go there let's go here where are the where are the principalities in the kingdoms in the uh uh in the royal families of the middle east you know the the qatar uh and all these uh, turkey and qatar and they all make such a big deal about uh, what they perceive as suppression of islam and even parts of radical islam when you talk about qatar in Europe and in the United States, this is this is the the, the uh, ability of the West to try to protect themselves from radical jihad, right, and, and terrorist is nothing compared to what's happening to the Uyghurs in uh, Western China, and you have nothing but crickets coming out of the Persian Gulf and coming out of uh, other places that are so it's Qatar that are so at the front of attacking the West on any perception of anything about um, the confrontation with radical Islam. And here you have, quite frankly, the populist nationalist movement in the United States and other places that have caused such a 
a uh, a uh, storm that governments are standing up that the Trump administration, because of its populist base and because of the empathy, as you can tell on War Room and this show and our support for the whistleblower movement and for the new federal state and for the diaspora of the Chinese people that want to return to their homeland, that that's why it was named genocide. And they have other parliaments. And a lot of these, you know, are really voices coming from the right. Where are the voices on the left? Where's Nancy Pelosi? Where This should be a drumbeat. The Chinese Communist Party is a illegitimate regime. It lied to the Chinese people during the Civil War in 1949. Land reform, all the great reforms of democracy, everything was supposed to happen, it lied. It's a totalitarian dictatorship, and now it has been accused of being a genocidal regime uh, regarding the Uyghurs. And the world is not moving quickly about it. And the history will condemn the West for not moving quicker uh, to sort this out. And it will certainly condemn uh, the Arab nations and the and the nations uh, the nations that are part of the broader Islamic community for not standing as one and demanding that the Chinese Communist Party dramatically change their behavior when it comes to the when it comes to the to the to the Uyghurs. So it's a it's really a disgrace. But I think it shows you the reason why the Gulf uh, states don't do it. The reason the West don't do it. They're either afraid of the Chinese Communist Party or they're in business with them. They're either business partners or they're afraid. That that's the two choices you have, and it's one of the things we're going to hammer on every day. So, and look, there's much more than just the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs are the worst examples, but it's terrible what they've done to to Tibetan Buddhism and the Dalai Lama. It's terrible what they're doing to underground house Christians. It's terrible what they're doing to the underground Catholics, to the Falun Gong on or organ harvesting, and just to Lao Beijing day in and day out. So it's absolutely terrible. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bannon. And speaking of cowardice, we have a very ag aggressive actor, Wang Yi, the foreign minister of the CCP. He told President Biden that uh, you must, uh, Biden must restore U.S.-China relationship and must remove sanctions like bossing around a kid. And what should these sanctions be removed? And what's your response to this aggressive Wang Yi? Thank you. He's aggressive. He was aggressive before Trump was president, and he's aggressive after Trump's president. He's remember he's the one that flew over when we took the phone call from Taiwan. Uh, they flew over a couple of days later. Outrage led led by him. Tiger Tiger was a Tiger Yang they call him. He's not such a tiger when you confront him and back him down. He's just he's like any tyrant, right? What they're looking for is appeasement. If you're soft, they're going to continue to push, and they see softness in the Biden administration. I mean, the Biden administration has stood up somewhat. That is only because of the polling in the United States. They understand that they're apt, uh, 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 was such a, off to such a bad start. And by the way, let me be specific. The Rasmussen poll that's out today shows, and it's the best tracking poll, shows he basically has 49% approval from the American people and 49% opposition. It's basically, he has no political capital. And so all the other radical things he's trying to do, like open borders and, and everything he's trying to get done of this radical nature, this democratic regime, right? Illegitimate democratic regime, I might add, because they did not win. They stole this. Um, the one thing he can't back off now is, the, is, is, the, is the, at least the perception that they're tough on China, because the American people want the administration to confront the Chinese Communist Party. His, he has no political capital. He is under 50% approval by the American people. The most interesting, and I'll break a little news here for you, the most interesting part of the Rasmussen tracking poll shows among independents, not Democrats or Republicans, not partisans, but the independent voter. He's, he's at 39%. And what did I tell everybody? Once we get him below 40% uh, approval, and particularly with independents, because he has overwhelming support from Democrats, uh, that's when he's out of political capital. And this is very important. Look, I, I don't need to tell you, Michael, or Dan, or any of you on here, Dr. Ming, anybody that's part of the G News, GTV, whistleblower, new federal state of what the Chinese Communist Party is. But to the audience and the broader audience here, they're gangsters. They're gangsters. I don't want to call them bullies. Bullies is too is too is too polite a term. That's like a schoolyard thing. They're gangsters. 
they think like gangsters, they act like gangsters, they, they accumulate wealth like gangsters, they destroy people's life like gangsters. They're, below, they're above any law because they are the law. What they say is the law. It's been like this since they took over China back in 1949 under, under a, one of the most murderous individuals in human history, Mao Zedong. That's, that's, that's their lineage, Mao Zedong. Somebody who killed hundreds of millions of Chinese people, starved them to death, uh, tortured them to death, uh, beat them to death. Just try to destroy the great culture of China during the Cultural Revolution to suit his own ends. This is not a monster. This is a devil. And that, that's who their George, their George Washington is a monster. And there's no difference in these guys. They, they wear nicer suits and they try to be more polite. But Tiger Yang, he's a monster. He needs to be stood up to. And you don't need to stand up to him and say, oh, we're going to outcompete you. No. We're going to confront you. We're going to take you on. And we're going to destroy you for the good of the Chinese people, for the good of the American people and the Judeo-Christian West, and for the good of all mankind. And you can see this now in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the Chinese, the CCP virus. So no, he's, he's their front man. He's probably the nastiest guy they've got. That's why I put him out front. He's a very nasty individual. If you're ever with him, he's, he's extremely nasty, but he's a coward. He can be backed off, and he, we back him off during the, uh, during the uh, Trump years, the first Trump president, the first Trump uh, term, and now he's back whining. He wants those sanctions off. If Biden removes anything that Trump did, the political blowback is going to be huge, and Biden can't take that right now. Yes, thank you, Mr. Bannon. Let's take down the CCP. Okay, okay. Uh, next from Sky. Hello, Mr. Bannon. My question is, the CCP will only allow a patriot to become a legislator of Hong Kong what does this move imply to the governance of the city? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. The, the, this is changing the election laws in Hong Kong? Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Bannon, uh, let me just repeat. So the CCP will only allow a patriot yes. to become a yes. legislator in Hong Kong. What does this of imply? Of course, they don't want any. It, it's a great question. Look, I, I said the Hong Kong situation was like analogous to Czechoslovakia back in the 1930s. The West needed to stand up. And I don't think there's any doubt. I think if you ask Trump and the people around President Trump now, there should have been a tougher, a tougher confrontation with the Chinese in Hong Kong. And you should have sanctioned the big financial institutions. You should have sanctioned the, um, Xi and Wan Xi Shan and the senior executives. There should have been a much tougher response. Since there was not a tougher response from the West, uh, you, you're getting the payback. I mean, they're clearly they don't want any, you know, Jimmy Lee is still what? He's still in jail awaiting trial, uh, you know, the, the, the tragedy of Hong Kong is that we have allowed the Chinese Communist Party to break their agreement, to break their uh, treaty, and to essentially take it over. And so, yes, it doesn't surprise me that it's only going to be patriots. I mean, there's not going to be democracy in, in China. There'll be faux democracy. This is all the puppets that the CCP have in there. And that's not a reflection on the Chinese people. It's not a reflection certainly on the Hong Kong people. The Hong Kong people among the bravest and the kids that took the streets and that that amazing fight they had for that entire year as covered by G News and GTV, I think better than anybody in the world as news organizations. And Miles Guo called that shot every day. I mean, Miles Guo was months ahead of the Hong Kong story and he told you what was going to happen and what Miles Guo said has come to pass. Right. So it shouldn't surprise anybody that they're doing this and they're just using gentle words like you have to be patriots. But it's basically all puppets They're you're, they're going to do with Hong Kong what they want to do. And the West has told them it's OK that the world's capital markets. Remember, the uh, the capital markets of um, of uh, of China, of uh, the, the West, the city of London and Wall Street have eventually concurred. They just want business as usual. So they want to get Hong Kong back to business and they don't care about really care about the um, uh, you know the political consequences of that, and so you're seeing whether it's Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, or other financial institutions, they're they're accommodating, they're accommodating the CCP, and Hong Kong is a perfect example. Why are they accommodating? It gets back to the first question, right? They just want business as usual. Remember, the world's economic system works off the slave labor of the Chinese people. It works for them because it also drives wages down throughout the world. The rest. The Chinese uh, workers are slaves. The rest of the workers of the world are essentially serfs. 
right? And that works for higher margins and then higher stock prices. So the globalist corporations, the, um, uh, the, the international banks, the, the Wall Street and the city of London, which is the Wall Street of Europe, are all, they all love that. They, they love being in business with the CCP. They have no moral qualms whatsoever about anything to do with the Uyghurs or the people in Hong Kong. They could care less. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bannon. Next, uh, uh, Castle, please. Hello there. Yes, and this is Castle. My question is, on last Friday, Bill Gers on Washington Times said that the United States warned of a, a new Chinese maritime law authorizing vessels to fire at ships in South China Sea area. What are the geopolitical implications of this law? Thanks. It's obviously huge. I mean, Bill Gertz is one of the best reporters that we have, the, one of the most well-sourced reporters in the West uh, regarding the CCP. I said on my radio show over at Breitbart, I think in, in, in uh, 2015, that within five to seven, eight years, we would be in a shooting war in the South China Sea. I remember as a young naval officer back in, I think, 76, 77, 78, it was, I, I was patrolling on a destroyer as a junior officer of the South China Sea to make sure it's total free navigation. It's it's one of the most important waterways, if not the most important waterway in the world, because it connects really Europe and the West to Asia, to the to the Asian people, right? And it is, and that's Tiger Yang. Their most the area they're most concerned with, if you look at geostrategically, the Chinese Communist Party is not the border of India. That's number two. Number one is the South China Sea. Remember, in their mind, that's where they flew over to see me in, 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 uh, in, in 2016. They, in their concept of the world, that's an inland sea. That's a territorial sea, the seven dots. That, that is Chinese Communist Party uh, property. That's theirs. And the whole world, the rest of the world, the rest, all the rest of Asia, right, has to come in there by invitation only. If conflict, if, if a kinetic war is to start between the Chinese Communist Party and the rest of the world, it will start in the South China Sea with some sort of um, some sort of military you know, uh, situation there. There's a new report out today. I, I forget where it is. I have to look up. But there's a new report out in, in one of the journals talking about projecting out 2025. Right. And, and uh, in this scenario, Kamala Harris is president of the United States. She's won the, the election in 2024. It's a theoretical exercise, but they start about they talk about a kinetic war, a kinetic military confrontation starting with the Chinese Communist Party. And where does it start? With a ship ramming in the South China Sea, predicated upon their justification by these changes in maritime law. So the South China Sea is is the friction part, is the real edge kinetically. However, to me, and I'm a former naval officer, my, you know, is my daughter's a West Point grad. She's a captain in the army, or was a captain in the army, served in Iraq. So we're military, we're huge supporters of the military, but it's what President Trump showed is unrestricted warfare of the CCP is really more weighted to information and cyber warfare and economic warfare than it is to kinetic warfare. You know, they don't want to fight the foreign devils, right, on a military conflict. They want to defeat them with information. They want to defeat them with economics. And they're doing a great job from their perspective. They're totally infiltrated the West, right? I, I don't. I particularly don't need to tell tell, tell the the Chinese uh, uh, diaspora in Europe how much they how much they've infiltrated every institution, every financial institution, every company, the political system. So it is um, no. That's a big change. And I keep telling people just watch the South China Sea. Now the Biden administration is totally following the Trump administration's policies right now for the military engagement. In the in the Western Pacific and in the uh, around the areas of the East China Sea, uh, with the Air Corridor and the in the South China Sea. So that's a but it's an area that has to be watched very closely. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Bannon. So uh, the next one's from Dr. TCC. Hi, Mr. Bannon. From Hello. this morning's Nikki Asia, it breaks that Biden will sign an executive order as early as this month to build supply chains like chips and other important strategic products in partnership with Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and Australia in order to reduce the reliance on the PRC. Do you think Biden will really do it? Thank you. 
It's another great question. Yes, I think Biden will really do it. This is a lot of the work that Dr. Peter Navarro worked on in uh, in the Trump administration. And the reason I think it has to do it is because, number one, the American people are demanding it. People want the supply chains, particularly in medical and health, and then the rest of the supply chains in the industrial and the in the fourth industrial revolution side to be out of the grasp of the Chinese Communist Party. You know, this is one of the this is one of the important reasons that the Chinese people need to free themselves. They should clearly be part of the world economic system. As nationalists, we understand that we are organized into a a, a global entity as nation states. Right. The tragedy of the, of the of the workers in China is going to become even more difficult for them to now because supply chains are going to be taken out of China because of the Chinese Communist Party. So, no, I think this it gets back to my point earlier. This is Biden understanding his very little political capital because of the questions of his legitimacy at the standing of the election. Number one. Number two is some of these radical policies that he's doing. Right, particularly on amnesty and the border wall and our sovereignty, that he has to put on the facade of supporting the Trump administration policies and and trying to be, stand up to the CCP and be as tough. So no, the the executive order actually makes sense when you look at it in, through that through that perspective. And it's incumbent upon us, right, the uh, the people that are the, what I call the anti CCP party, right, mm-hmm. to take down the CCP to continue to press our case every day because we're getting victories. And this is another victory. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Ben. So the last question, the next question is from me. So it's a very big about uh, coronavirus. So Czech, Slovak, uh, Czech Republic, the Cardinal Duke and the Germany's largest newspaper built. And yesterday, Wall Street Journal uh, had a article from Mr. Pompeo it's all confronting, all saying that the virus is a lab originated uh, a biological weapon. So is the world finally waking up and what is going on here? Thank you. What amazes me about the piece from from Secretary Pompeo and the results throughout the rest of Western Europe is. The willful blindness, the willful blindness of the world's medical establishment medical establishment, not individual voices in the, in the medical field, but the medical establishment institutionally, whether it's WHO, whether it's NIH, etc. Uh, the willful blindness, not simply to look the other way, but to support the Chinese Communist Party's biological weapons program. It's obvious to anybody that has any a scintilla of knowledge of following this, what generally occurred. And more importantly, we have a voice of like John the Baptist in the in the New Testament. We have the voice of Dr. Li Ming Yang, who is to me a uh, a global hero, and, and 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 shows the great fighting spirit, tenacity, and courage of the Chinese people. You know, she came from the from the, from the obviously from Hong Kong back in what was it April to tell the world exactly what happened as a fact witness from the WHO reference lab, but also as a scientist to walk through what had happened. And the world went out of its way not to listen to her because it kowtows to the Chinese Communist Party's money. Money. That's what we have here, money. So no, I think what Pompeo did was very powerful. We obviously support it. We talk about it every day. You know, on one of the biggest entertainment shows here on HBO, the Bill Maher show, He's a comedian, but he's a very big political com- commentator. I was on his show about a year ago, right when we started the pandemic, and they didn't want us to talk about it. They didn't think it was important enough at the time. He had a group of investigators that came on two weeks ago. And these people said, hey, this came from the lab. And it's not from a bad cave. It's not from the wet market. This came from that Wuhan lab, and it's made in the Wuhan lab. And he goes, well, why haven't more people backed it up? Why are we into it and still a discussion? He goes, she goes, because the messenger was the wrong guy. That was me. The messenger was the wrong guy. Because I'm so partisan, right? I'm such a populist. I'm such a nationalist. I'm such I'm such a supporter of Lao Beijing that they think, oh, that's just been in arguing for the little guy in China because he hates the CCP and he wants to blame the CCP. They didn't really do it. That's just Bannon being, you know, his, he and his crazy friend Miles Guo 
and all these crazy people with the new federal state and all these these people outside the embassies they're all nutcases they're all they all hate the ccp so much because they took their money they took their they took their uh bank accounts and they drove them out of china and so they're just they're just haters they just hate and that's all they're trying to do is blame the ccp for everything right if it rains it's the ccp's fault now you're seeing the world can't hide from the truth what did dr Li ming yang say world can't hide from the truth ultimately just like in the uyghurs the world can't hide. and i think our mission our mandate this is why i love doing your show and all the great questions is to continue not to back off one second of one day right our, our moral obligation our moral obligation to mankind to our own countries but most importantly to the chinese people is to is to fight for their freedom every day by exposing the truth this wuhan lab is once again on the show today we're gonna have a big section on the wuhan lab and listen remember in the united states what happened in wuhan is going to have huge political blowback here because tony fauci's hands are all over it so you look the number one guy he rated higher than than than, than trump last year the media praised this guy he couldn't do any wrong Tony Fauci's hands all over this virus, his hands and his funding of the gain of function experiments that went on unsupervised in Wuhan under PLA uh, authority, People Liberation's bioweapons program financed partly in a small part by American taxpayers who are totally blind to what happened here with Fauci and others. You know, the question is, where were the French? Where was the West? Where's the World Health Organization, the, re the reference lab in Hong Kong? You know, all the safeguards that were supposed to be put in place. Where were they? And I think, because I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but there are no coincidences. I strongly believe that the reason you're seeing these institutions so support the nonsense about the wet market and the bad cave is they understand when the truth's exposed, it's going to come back on them that they have been partners to the Chinese Communist Party. That's what we have here. They've been partners to the Chinese Communist Party. So thank you. It's a great question. OK, thank you, Mr. Bannon. So uh, next one from Dr. Stella. Hello, Mr. Bannon. Hello, so, Doctor. A wave of the CCP's 50 cent internet army has spread on Twitter in the past weeks, and they attacked you, Mouse, and Dr. Yan personally with cartoons. It's so prolific that they almost hijacked Hashtags Yan Li Meng, Steve Bannon, Mouse Quark on Twitter. How do you feel about this? I feel great. I think that shows you how much they fear us. The, the Wu Mao Army, remember the, the director of national intelligence uh, came up and said, uh, and said about, um, it said about uh, uh, the, the interference in the election. Remember, Mike Lindell and others are being sued by Dominion Voting Systems. They're saying, hey, the Chinese Communist Party directly intervened in the voting machines. I, I don't know, I haven't seen enough evidence of that. But the Director of National Intelligence, the, the report that was mandated in, in 2018 about foreign interference in elections, did miss the 45 day deadline. It wasn't delivered until the closing days of the Trump administration. And what did the Director of National Intelligence, and for your audience, that's where the CIA reports to. That's where DIA reports to. It's the overall uh, senior intelligence official in any American government, 17 separate uh, intelligence agencies report up to them. His report was there was foreign involvement and it was the CCP. And it came through, the implication was through the social media side of guess what? The Wu Mao 50 cent army. So no, it's out there. I, I wear it as a badge of honor when they attack me. I, I think it's fantastic because people can see through it and see that they're afraid of us. And they are, they should be afraid of us. Remember, when the CCP falls, Everybody in the Wu Mao 50 Cent Army is going to be have to help be held accountable for their actions. So no, I, I think it's actually it shows you how afraid of Dr. Yan they are, how afraid of Miles Guo, how they fear the whistleblower movement, how they fear the new federal state of China, and uh, and me as a very small supporting actor to that great cause. Uh, folks, it's not I got to pop to get ready for the show, but I want to thank you so much. Questions are always great. Best interview I do every week. Okay. Toughest questions. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. We're we're going to pop more and more fantastic questions for you and for waiting for your fantastic, fabulous answers in next week. Thank you, Mr. Bannon. Let's take great. down the CCP. Take down the CCP. Great great show, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Great honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, Mr. And, Bannon. Thank you, Mr. Is, Bannon. 
and this is our show today. And we're going to have our shows uploaded to Rumble and for Mr. Bannon, uh, for Mr. Bannon's platform. Next week, same time, we're going to have Mr. Bannon here to answer our questions uh, as usual. So um, this is uh, this ends our show here. We believe our audience has learned something from Mr. Bannon about the Trump, sorry, about the Biden administration and the confrontation and the virus. So uh, see you next time and uh, goodbye.